presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. growing increasingly frustrated at being given the cold shoulder by the Democratic Party and the left-leaning media, now hinting at a third-party run. They're trying to make sure that I can't participate at all in the political process, and, um, and so I, I'm going to keep all my options open. And I'll know, you know, I'll, I'll have to make a decision after the 14th of this month. Actually, 14th of October. But it's true. RFK Jr. has been appearing a lot more on Fox than CNN or MSNBC. It's running in the Democratic primary. But if he were to run as a third-party candidate, who would benefit more? I don't know the answer. Trump or Biden? You might think Democrat running against Biden automatically hurts him. It may not be that simple with RFK. A recent poll projects his favorability amongst GOP voters at about 50 percent compared to 38 percent for Democrats. He's got a record low now of 9 percent Democratic voters saying they'd vote for him. Joining me now, Anthony Scaramucci, host of the Open Book podcast. He served as White House communications director for President Trump for a little while. Cenk Uger, he's the founder and host of the major progressive news network and show The Young Turks. And Kaylee McGee-White, the Restoring America editor at The Washington Examiner and a Blankley fellow at the Steamboat Institute. Anthony Scaramucci, who benefits more? I think Donald Trump benefits more, and I think that the Kennedy brand is a, you know, 100-year brand in Democratic progressive politics. And even though RFK is probably Republican light, uh, and those numbers, notwithstanding those numbers, I think the name recognition, you have to remember, people that go into the voting booth, they typically vote name recognition. And I think they see him as a Kennedy, not necessarily for what he stands for. Do so you think he'd take people from Biden? I do. I think, I think it would be like the Ralph Nader incident in 2000. I don't know. Do you agree? No, but it's super close. So on the one hand, he believes in conspiracy theories about vaccines and just about everything else, and that's Republican 101. So <laughs> on the other hand, the Trump voters love Trump. What are they going to go for Trump light? You know, so. But what about the what? But Kayla, what about the Trump? Well, what about the Republican voters who don't like Trump, right? But they certainly can't vote for Biden. Isn't it possible that he could be? the one taking away votes from Trump. Potentially, I do agree, though, that this ultimately hurts Biden more than it hurts Trump, because the problem here is that voters at least feel like they've been given a choice with the Republican nomination. There's a very crowded primary field. Even if Donald Trump comes out on top, he will have had to compete against other people in order to win that nomination. That's not what's happening with Biden here. There is very little competition because the Democratic establishment refuses to allow there to be competition. Voters don't have much of a say in it at all. And so I think they ultimately take that out on Biden. Yeah, first of all, I agree that uh, the way the Democrats have run the primary is abysmal. Uh, well, you've been I, one of the most outspoken yeah. ones. You, you, you claim to have spoken with all these people who are ready to go, but you won't name them. And, right? Yeah, no, no, no. They're not ready to go. That's part of the problem. Right. Right? So uh, the Democrats have said, that's it. If Joe Biden says that he's running, everybody stand down. And if you dare to challenge him, you'll be blackballed for the rest of history from the Democratic Party. And it has it scared the living daylights out of them. And they were all dropped out, which is not a you know profile in courage, if you ask me. Uh, but there is this bottled up frustration because Biden is polling in the 30s. He's a terrible candidate. I'm doing a petition to drive him out of the race. We need real candidates here. Will they take it out by saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to vote for Kennedy? No, probably if they were going to go in that direction, they'd go to Cornell West. So Kennedy, his brand now is anti-vaccine, and that's very right wing. So it probably hurts Trump a tiny bit with independents who like the conspiracy theories but think Trump is out of bounds. So can I just say, I just want to pile on for a second. <laughs> the president is too old, and it's not an ageism thing. It is just an observation of what's going on. You know, there are 90-year-olds that are probably vital and are thinking perfectly with great acuity. It's not him. And his staff is telling people privately that he has three to five good hours a day, and they're managing his schedule to deal with that dilemma. And that's not going to get better over the next two years. It's going to get worse. And so you got to ask yourself, if you really love America, why not stand down and find a qualifiable younger candidate that has the same policies as you, uh, he or she, that can drive the agenda that you yeah. want? Look, I, thought I think it's a, a mistake. I thought there was a chance he was <clears throat> using the Hunter Biden thing as an excuse to drop out, to say, look, 
I'm going to pardon my son. I know it's going to be political suicide, but I'm going to drop out of the race after that. And I yeah. think that's more well, fantasy well, than reality. I, 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 Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.